Yo, what is going on, everybody? This is RBT, and welcome to another episode of the Houston Texans Madden 17 Connected Franchise Series. You guys went absolutely insane on episode number one. It is currently like three hours after that episode went live. It's already at like 20,000 views, over 2,000 likes, 5,000 comments that I had to look through for this video. And I'm glad you guys enjoyed episode one, and for the most part, okay with the team that we have selected for this new Connected Franchise series. And if you guys did miss episode number one, I am still doing a Madden 18 GOAT Edition giveaway to one of my lucky subscribers. All you have to do is go follow me on Instagram and leave your Instagram name in the comment section below. There will be a link to my Instagram in the description box below as well if you don't know what it is. But go follow it, leave your name in the comment section below, and you automatically have a chance to win the Madden 18 GOAT Edition, whether you're on PS4 or Xbox. Box. I'm gonna be picking the winner probably over this weekend so be sure to hurry up and go follow me on Instagram and enter the giveaway and last but not least before we head into our first trade attempts for this new connected franchise series like I said I'm having to record this episode like three hours after episode one went up because I promised you guys I'd upload another episode tomorrow and have it done in time I have to record it right now with that being the case there's not that many comments with a ton of thumbs up but I went with the ones most thumbed up at this point so hopefully you guys are okay with that and if your comment isn't featured in today's episode and your trade isn't featured be sure to keep on leaving those suggestions in the comment section below and you'll always have a chance to be featured in the next episode but with all that said it is officially time to jump into the trades and begin our quest to make the houston texans great so first of all what i'm gonna do is something that a lot of you didn't actually suggest in the comment to last video but i think it'd be stupid not to sign some free agents i have 36 million to work with and we have a lot of positions that we need to upgrade, so why not at least try out some of these free agents throughout the preseason, and then if we have to release them or do whatever with them, that will be okay. We'll get the money back. So anyways, I am going to sign a couple free agents. I am kind of looking for a backup quarterback, but I'm not willing to spend $2.5 on a 70 overall quarterback. Now, running back though, I am tempted... I am tempted to bring him back. Some people did want me to bring Arian Foster back and just try him out maybe as a backup or maybe end up trading him. I know he's $3 million, but I think we are going to bring Arian Foster back to the Texans. I'm not really sure how Texans fans feel about Arian Foster after he ended up leaving the Texans. And I don't know how they feel about him in general, but he's going to get one last shot on the Houston Texans. Now, wide receiver, do I bring back Andre Johnson and Arian Foster? You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. Bring them both back to finish their career in Houston. I mean, maybe they just play off in the preseason and I cut them. But, I mean, why not spend $6 million on two veterans that spent the bulk of their career, the majority of their career in Houston and were very good players for the franchise. So why not bring them back, pay them some respect, and see if they can, you know, do a job. Now, also, do I buy an interior offensive lineman? Will Montgomery is an 81 overall. I think... We'll buy one offensive lineman, and it will be Will Montgomery. He's 3.65 million, but I think it would be worth it to bring him in as we have like 78 at the position right now. Now, defensively, I think the only position we're going to upgrade through free agency is the cornerback position. Bring in one solid cornerback. I don't know if I want to bring in Darrell Revis, though. Do I bring Darrell Revis to Houston? Do I do it? He's 4.47 million. You know what? I think I'll do it to be safe because he's going to get signed after this first week is simmed. I'm going to do it. If we need the cap room later, I'm 100% will be fine if we have to trade him away or have to cut him or whatever. So $4.47 million is spent on Darrell Revis. Also, we add Andre Johnson, Will Montgomery, and Arian Foster. So maybe you think that's dumb. We did just spend like $15 million right there, but like I said, we always can go back, trade those players. Or release them if we have to and now it is officially time to jump into our first trade attempt now I do want to say moving forward for you guys suggesting trades in the comments below I want you guys to at least limit your suggestions to three players per comment because this was a problem in the Browns franchise people would get very upset when I wouldn't pick their comment when I had a lot of thumbs up but there was like 20 players suggested so Please don't do that. At least, at most, limit your comment to three suggestions. I think, to just to make it fair, if it has over three suggestions, I don't think I'm going to use it. Because I want to try to make it fair. I will, Because it, it's hard for me to pick, like, what player to use out of your comment if you use, like, more than four or five. So, just please keep it to three players per comment. Now, with that said, I am going to use a couple comments with more than three suggestions in today's video because I didn't tell you in the last one. But with that said, the first suggestion 
with 79 thumbs up. And if I would have waited to record this video like two days down the road, I'd probably have like 300 or 400 thumbs up. But James Jamil suggests Jay Ajayi, Don Terry Poe, Jack Conklin, and Brandon Cooks. Now, out of this comment, I'm going to go after the first two players, Jay Ajayi and Don Terry Poe, because we're not going to go after Derrick Henry in this connected franchise because I got him in my Titans connected franchise series and the Browns. So we've used him in two franchises. I love him. I would love to use him again, but I want to keep things fresh. Now, Jay Ajayi isn't necessarily an exact replica of Derrick Henry, but he has a very similar skill set. So that's why I wouldn't mind picking up Jay Ajayi. And on Terry Poe, we definitely need a defensive tackle, one of the most athletic defensive tackles in the NFL. So I definitely wouldn't mind picking him up as well. Now, keep in mind as well, going into these trade attempts, not every trade is going to be guaranteed. Like, I'm not going to spend way too much to get one particular player because we have, like, probably 10 episodes of making trades so I have to keep some of my assets I'm not gonna spend them all stupidly on particular players when we could use some of the players as trade bait elsewhere so I have to be smart about this but I am gonna at least attempt every trade so Jay Ajayi from the Miami Dolphins he's an 81 overall he's very young but what is it gonna take to bring him to the Houston Texans he wouldn't hurt our cap hit whatsoever but I want to try to trade away players instead of draft picks. I want to save my draft picks until I absolutely have to use them for trades. Now, they need a middle linebacker, a right outside linebacker, and a left guard. At right outside linebacker, I don't want to trade away Zach Cunningham, a very good young rookie. Left outside linebacker, we have nobody. Middle linebacker, we could potentially trade away uh, Brian Cushing, but I want to save him for a better trade. Because I think we can get Jay Ajayi okay. for a little bit less than a Brian Cushing. So I know they'd be interested in him, but I don't want to make that trade. Now, they want a left guard. Do we have a left guard we could give them? Xavier Suafilo. Not interested in him. So how about cornerbacks? Like I said, I know cornerback is a position we need to upgrade. But I'm probably going to end up trading away some of these older guys. Because I'm going to bring better guys in. And no point in keeping these guys on the roster when they can trade them away and they're going to end up getting replaced anyway. So if they're interested in Jonathan Joseph, I'll be happy. And they're not. How about Kevin Johnson? They are. I know he's younger. I don't know if I necessarily want to trade him away. How about Kareem Jackson? They're not interested in him. So Kevin Johnson is the only one they're interested in. Now, do I actually attempt this trade? Kevin, he's 24 years old. I don't know if I want to do it, fellas. I don't know if I want to do it. Are they interested in Darrell Revis? They actually are. So we could just straight up trade away Darrell Revis, but we're not going to do that. How about, for starters, we try Jonathan Joseph and that quarterback. They, they're interested in the quarterback. We have Brandon Whedon. I'm not really sure who would be interested in Brandon Whedon, but we're going to do it just for the sake of doing it. And at left guard, why not go ahead and throw out there Xavier Suafilo and see if this trade is even close to going through. And it's in the yellow but that's not necessarily enough to make anything happen. Now, they are, in fact, interested in my third string center. So let's see how close this would be to going through. And that's actually so close. So we're about to get our starting running back, Jay Ajayi. This is about to happen for our third string center. He's going to be an absolute beast. Since we're trading for a running back, why not trade away one of our, like, third string running backs? Why not just trade away Akeem Hunt and see if that's enough for this to go through? And it is... My, my game just froze. My game actually just froze in the middle of a trade attempt. Well, find out next episode if we're getting JHI. So I literally just logged back into the franchise, and if you look at the running back position, JHI is there. So apparently that trade went through. It froze, we locked back in, and we have Jay Ajayi. Our third string center is gone, and I'm guessing that running back was gone. Crazy that running back was enough to make that deal go through. So we have an 81 overall Jay Ajayi. I think Derrick Henry might have been the same exact overall as Jay Ajayi, so I actually expect similar production from Jay Ajayi in this series. But that's actually pretty freaking hype. A third string center and like a fourth or, fourth or fifth string running back. Now to try and get our star defensive tackle, Don Terry Poe, now a member of the Atlanta Falcons, but we're going to try to bring him to the Houston Texans. To replace Vince Wilfork, kind of two completely different defensive tackles in Vince Wilfork and Don Terry Poe, but I still want to try to get him. So the Falcons, won't, they need every single position at linebacker, or free safety and tight end. I think we might have enough to bring in Don Terry Poe, but like I said guys, I'm not trading away a first round draft pick unless it's for somebody absolutely incredible. So. No draft picks as of right now. Now, the Falcons are interested 
and CJ Fedorowicz. Now, would you guys hate it if I traded him away? I know he's very young, he's pretty freaking good, but I know you guys could suggest me a really good tight end to go out and get instead of CJ Fedorowicz if we could bring in Don Terry Poe. Now, that is an option, but I still have to be smart about all this. I'm going to throw this trade into the universe and see what the Falcons say, and it's in the yellow, so if we can somehow make this trade go through with just players, I think I'd be okay with it. So they also need a middle linebacker. We have Max Bullock, who I think is actually pretty decent, but throwing him in the deal as well, and it's so close. I think we're about to get ourselves a very good defensive tackle. All we have to do is throw in some crap, <laughs> just some absolute crap. Tyler Irvin, tr probably throw him in, and this trade will go through. And with that, Don Terry Poe is a Houston Texan. Now guys, with that trade, it would be dumb not to pick up Gary Barnage. was recently released by the Cleveland Browns in the free agency. He's still there, not signed by anybody. He's very good. Why not sign the veteran and bring him to replace TJ Fedorowicz, who helped us bring in Don Terry Post? So, like I said, maybe you guys want a better tight end later. But, I mean, if worse comes to worse, we can just trade him away. So this next trade attempt would make way too much sense for me not to at least attempt it. So as you guys see on the screen, with 74 thumbs up, Andrew Horton wants me to get a bunch of guys, but the player I am going to attempt out of the trade is TJ Watt, the younger brother of JJ Watt. So we could have JJ Watt and TJ Watt on the same defense, and one of our positions of need is outside linebackers. So why not try to get the youngster in TJ Watt? That would just make for an epic, absolutely epic defense. He's a 77 overall. James Harrison only costs 630k, that's crazy. But anyways, TJ Watt. The Steelers do need a cornerback. And we have some cornerbacks I am willing to trade away. Are they interested in Jonathan Joseph? And they're not. But what if I tried this trade regardless, and it's not even that close? I don't know why they're not interested in my high 70 overall players. Usually they are. Are they interested in Darrell Revis? Of course they're not. So, with that said, let's keep on going down the list. How about Kareem Jackson or Kevin Johnson? They're interested in both of these guys, so I will 100% be willing to trade away Kareem Jackson because he's worth $6.17 million. We've already spent a ton in the free agency, so we can get some cap room back, plus get ourselves a very good, young, talented outside linebacker. Can this deal go straight through? And it was accepted, baby, straight up. Kareem Jackson for TJ Watt. Now, TJ Watt and JJ Watt, Jadavion Clowney. And all these players in defense. This is uh this is gonna be fun. For the final trade attempt of today's episode is a player that was plastered all throughout the comments. I could only find two that had a lot of thumbs up, but I saw this guy everywhere. So with 35 and 28 thumbs up, as you see on the screen now, my subscribers want me to get haha -ha Clinton Dix. Now, this was a player we heavily tried to get in my Cleveland Brown Connected franchise series, but he's just so hard to get. Once again, I'm not gonna trade away everybody for him. Like it just comes down to if we have players that the Packers are going to want, depending on what players I have that I'm willing to trade away. Now, I would obviously love to have HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix on the team, but like I said, I'm not going to absolutely break the team just for him because he's an 88 overall. I'd be willing to trade away Brian Cushing, although we only have one middle linebacker now, so maybe I need to sign a free agent just in case. Although I do think you guys are going to suggest middle linebackers moving forward. I said in the introductory episode, I am willing to trade away Brian Cushing because I am going to end up getting another middle linebacker. Anyways, I would be willing to trade him away for Ha Ha Clinton Dix, but we're going to try to hold out for now. They're relatively interested in this right guard, Jeff Allen. He is my starter, but I'm planning on getting a better right guard later on in the series. Also, they need a left end, and I'm going to go ahead and trade away... I'm not trading away J.J. Watt, so let's just completely forget that I even said that. Why is nobody interested in Jonathan Joseph? See, it's not even out of the orange yet. God... So how about, are they interested in Darrell Revis by chance? Of course they're not. I'm willing to throw in Brian Cushing and Jeff Allen. Now, if this deal doesn't go through, I don't think I'm going to give anything else. Because, like I said, we can use Brian Cushing later. And I know this would be an incredible player to get. We have so much we still have to do in terms of this team that I'm all willing to... I probably can trade away Brian Cushing for like two or three different positions. Like get a huge trade of positions of needs just from Brian Cushing. So, with that said, a player they're slightly interested in and then Brian Cushing, who they really want to get. Whew. I don't know how I feel about this trade going through. It might not even be close, but we're going to submit it, and it's in the yellow. God, that kind of makes me want to do something. Okay, so I promise you, last but not least, we're going to throw in a third-round draft pick. Now, if this is accepted, I'll take it. 
but this would be a huge player to begin off this series. He's already got some huge players. Jay Ajayi, Don Terry Poe, TJ Watt, but Ha Ha Clinton Dix would be icing on the cake. I'm not going any higher. I promise you, last attempt of the episode. I'm going to submit the offer, and it was so close. Oh, I kind of want to do it, but I got to be smart about it. We have nine more episodes to get more players. I just got to be smart and wait on your suggestions in the comment section below. Because like I said, be sure to leave your suggestions for next episode because there's plenty more where this came from. And be sure to also thumbs up the comments that you think would be very good trade attempts for the series. I didn't mention that last episode, so be sure if you see a trade that you think would be nice for the series, drop it a thumbs up. So I'm actually willing to splash cash on two more free agents. Like I said, I think it would just be a waste not to basically sign these players for free if we end up trading them on elsewhere, which is not necessarily the prime objective. It's just to have good players in the team for just not having to trade anybody away, if you get what I'm saying. So, like, who do I try to get? I need a guard. So do we go ahead and just sign a guard right here? William Campbell is really young. Should we sign? Nah, I'm not going to sign him. Why not just go ahead and sign a starter? Jeff Schwartz, I mean, will still potentially trade away for a right guard, but hey, 3.34 million, I mean, as of right now, he'd be the starter. And last but not least, I know we don't necessarily need a defensive end, but in terms of a player being young and talented at the same time, Bojern Warner is one of the better, younger players in the free agency pool as of right now. He'd be about 3 million, so it's going to leave us with a little bit under 20 million to spend in terms of trades, but like I have so many players that is worth like 6 plus million, like 6 million or so, like Jonathan Joseph, who's like 5, and then you have Darrell Revis, who I, I don't know what I'm going to do with, and then some other players, so I'm not really worried about money as of right now, but I am going to sign him, and god dang it, I forgot, I need to sign a middle linebacker as well. So that's actually one more signing than I wanted to make, but we got to do it. Got to do it. Now who do I sign? There's a bunch of guys here. This is just for debt purposes because we only have two middle linebackers as of right now. And we're going to end up trading Brian Cushing away eventually. Uh, you know what? I like Ray Maluga. Not the best guy to use her, but he's a veteran. Two million. Why not? So with that, that is going to conclude the first ever trade portion of this Houston Texan Connected Franchise Series. We're about to jump into the first two games of the preseason, then jump into week three of the preseason for episode number three, I guess. I have number one counts as an actual episode. You get what I'm saying. I'm definitely liking the way things are looking so far. But like I said in the intro episode for the preseason, since I'm playing two games per episode, I'm going to be just playing the moments so the video isn't like 800 minutes long. But hopefully guys do enjoy, and if you do, make sure to drop a like. 2,000 likes would be absolutely incredible. But with that said, hopefully nobody gets hurt in this first preseason game. First moment of the game, 39 from the 41-yard line. Let's see what Deshaun Watson has in him. Going to be a play-action pass. Going to look over the middle. Wow. Oh, uh, bad start. <laughs> oh, what a great first play of this series. There's going to be a lot more of where that came from. That was bad. So let's try that again. Hopefully we do not throw another interception because that was pretty freaking embarrassing. So first down and 10. And I have Andre Johnson open and there's a flag. This game could not have started any worse. I'm guessing that was probably a holding call on my offensive lineman. Whoever it is, you're getting cut. I have too many average offensive linemen for you to be screwing things up. Will Montgomery, you're getting cut. I just picked you up. Now you're freaking getting cut. I'm really hoping throughout the simulation portion when you're simming in the moments that JHI didn't get hurt. He got hurt. God dang. Out for game. So that kind of sucks, but at least it's not anything you know, severe like a broken neck or anything. So it is the second quarter. Nothing really happened in the first quarter. Deshaun Watson did throw two interceptions. One, I guess, that was simmed. One that I threw. So Tom Savage is now in the game. But that's just how the preseason goes, man. Gonna look for Braxton Miller. He's going to drop the pass. So let's see if our second string can end up getting this W because the game was held scoreless in the first quarter. As you see, our draft class, which there was only three players there, which is kind of weird. But let's move on. Second down to 10 from the 45-yard line. Six minutes to go in the first half of this first preseason game. Tom Savage is going to find the running back wide open. Arian Foster has actually had some pretty big catches in this episode so far that you might not have seen. But you know what? Let's bring Tom Savage in the hurry up. Let's see if Tom Savage can beat out Deshaun Watson in the preseason to be the starting quarterback of the Houston Texans. That would be crazy, but I mean, it is against the second string defense of the 49ers. We have Arian Foster open again. He's gonna, I sh <laughs> that's an RBT play right there. That should have 100% been a touchdown, but you know, I didn't keep it to the outside. So Lamar Miller now checks into the ball game. See if he can get this first down, and he has a huge hole. 
And he does. I mean, we are playing the 49ers, so we got to keep that into mind. Second down and sin from the 17-yard line. Let's see if Tom Savage can actually be a savage on this throw. The post route going to be open. That is Jalen Strong. So very awkward, I must say. I apologize about the big gap in gameplay. My webcam actually froze, and that's never happened in the history of me recording videos. My webcam has never froze before, and I don't know how long it was sitting there freezing for, so I'm not sure how long you're going to miss the gameplay, but if you did miss a big portion of this first game, we are losing 14-3. I'm not taking it too serious, but like we're just not playing good offensively, so <laughs> we're going to need some work. So not sure of the severity of the injury, but Brandon Whedon was hurt before this play. So we're down to two quarterbacks now. Fourth and inches attempting a very late comeback attempt, but it's it's not going to happen. As I'm going to throw it down, I just, uh, nobody was open. This is, this is, our offense needs some work, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, that does it. I know it might have been very short in the video because I'm not sure how long my webcam was frozen for, so I apologize about that, but there's not much to see anyway. I played bad, the team was bad. I need to fix some things because that was embarrassing. 14 to 3, we lose his first preseason game. Third down and five for Drew Brees and the Saints at the 23 yard line. Still enough, another ball game. Got this guy covered. The slant's going to be open. What an awful throw from Drew Brees. Him and Ted Ginn was not on the same page there. The moments are whack. So I think the next drive, I'm going to stop playing the moments because they're just, it's like skipping things. I had to restart this game because. Before we actually came in last game for a moment was when the game was like 14 all and I didn't pay attention until then. I was like, what the heck? So the moment thing isn't the move for right now. So hopefully we can get a play right here. Jonathan Joseph with a nice play that should set up potentially for a Saints field goal, which will give him a three to nothing lead. Whoa. Um, yeah, the Saints just missed that field goal. That's, that's really weird because the kickers in Connected Franchise especially on the computer, always make field goals. You saw in the Browns franchise, they would never miss, and they would punt the ball 80 yards. And it's the same exact sliders from that one, and yet the first field goal attempt I've actually watched, that's what happens. That's crazy. So since the gameplay's been all whack so far and the play a moment thing is kind of screwing up, I'm just going to actually play this drive, the whole entire drive, and let you guys see what happens with my first string offense. Deshaun Watson hasn't done much in this game so far, but Ryan Griffin picks up a nice little conservative three-yard play. And since the first string does come out automatically after the end of the first quarter, we're just going to go ahead and run hurry up so you guys can see the most out of Deshaun Watson and Jay Ajayi as possible in this episode. Not a lot of blocking right here, but mine's in a thousand different places because the, the play a moment thing is like completely screwed up my mind and completely screwed up my rhythm. But we have to move on because life goes on, right? So third down and seven. Hopefully we can actually score a touchdown on this drive because if we lose two straight games in an episode, that's going to suck. Hopefully you guys won't hate me though because it's just the preseason. Let's see if we can convert it right here. Oh, I look for why at the last second. So the Saints now do have the lead 3 nothing, but we do have the ball at the 43-yard line. Going to keep the gameplay here for at least the first half. So you guys can actually get some gameplay in today's episode as we don't get any blocks. So it looks like it's Ezekiel Elliott all over again. But keep in mind, once again, it's our full entire second string in the ball game right now. And I'm just trying to get accustomed to this Houston Texans team. I'm so used to everybody on the Browns. So we're going to learn everybody's skill set all over again. So play action pass here. Tight end, I think, is not going to be open because we get hit as we throw the football. So that sucks. Third down of 14. I might kick a field goal because we have to see how good our kicker is from the 44-yard line because Cody Parkey can bang these from midfield like it was nothing in the last franchise. So we need at least probably like five yards or so. If we can tie the ball game, I'll be a-okay. But got to be smart, though. What an awful throw! What, what is going on in this episode? That was to the slot receiver, not the receiver on the left running the slant. That was a pathetic throw from Tom Savage. So, so far, our quarterback play hasn't been too good. So, bad news, fellas. We are down by six. And even worse, Lamar Miller has been injured. I don't know the extent of his injury, but he has been injured. So, we've already had two running backs get injured in the first two games. Luckily, J.J. is back. Hopefully, it'll be the same for Lamar Miller. So, first down and ten. Trying to get something on the board in this episode. The pass to Braxton Miller it's going to be a first down. But Tom Savage, you got to say, has not been a savage in this game. I've played a little bit with him uh, without showing you in the gameplay, and he's just been bad. So we're going to run some cheese vertical routes, get some points on the board here. You know what? Throw the same exact route to Braxton Miller, and Tom Savage can't even bullet past that. Uh, NFL quarterback, he's eating them out there, as you saw. <laughs> Anyways, let's just 
disregard what I just said. You guys can go back and watch that for yourself. But second down and two, I want to get some points, man. If I have to keep throwing the slants, I'll keep on doing it because I want to at least get a field goal for you guys in this episode because this gameplay, this offense has been some absolute trash to play with. I think we need to completely revamp the offensive line moving forward, at least. You know what? I might just chunk the ball deep here to one of our receivers. Is Andre Johnson on the field? No, he's not. I might chunk this deep to either Braxton Miller or Jalen Strong. One of these fellas is going to come down with a huge catch. Braxton Miller is open. This is going to be a pick. He had separation, but Tom Savage isn't a savage enough. I know it's just the preseason, but fourth and inches, we're still going for it. We have Jay Prosh, one of the best fullbacks in the league, and that's... Oh, my. Oh my, <laughs> I thought that was it. Second down and 10. Should we take the dump off? We're not gonna. Gonna hit RB down the field. That's gonna be Alfred Blue, who's gonna make the reception. He fumbles the ball, <laughs> but luckily retains possession down to the three yard line. Finally, a big play for today's episode. It's been such a boring game to play, and I'm sure if it's been a boring game for me to play, with there being hardly any highlights, it's probably been an extremely boring gameplay to watch as well. So finally, it's something. So here we go. Braxton Miller. Are you actually kidding? Are you actually kidding me? Talk about EA AIDS. So, we get hit. The ball just fumbles out of his hands. Bounces off a helmet. Bounces off a shoulder. Bounces off another helmet. Lands into the hand of a defensive lineman. So, <laughs> got the ball back, man. Braxton Miller versus a safety. This has got to be a touchdown. Braxton Miller, after everything, finally get a big play for a touchdown. As this is the worst game I've ever played in my life. But we're still going to take the lead 10-9. to So the Saints tacked in a field goal, took the lead with 53 seconds to go. I know it's just a preseason game, but I still want to win this game for you guys. So it's time to officially... Be great. Although we have Tom Savage playing right now at quarterback. We have a wide open uh, running back though. That's blue again with a huge play. Gonna get close to midfield. Remember, all we gotta do is get in the field goal range and we can win this ball game. Just no dumb decisions. I mean, we have Tom Savage at quarterback and we just got to be smart where we throw the football because an inaccurate throw is definitely possible with him at quarterback, which means that could be an easy interception. Oh my god, that was almost a disaster. Alfred Blue! Oh my god, two plays to the running back, and just like that, I thought that was about to be a stop in the backfield. Alfred Blue takes it to the house on a halfback screen. He's been our player of the game and player of the episode thus far. That's three huge plays on the day as we regain the lead, 17-12. to 12. That's got to be ball game. Let's go, baby. Brian Cushing with the interception as we are finally going to win our first preseason game of the year. So I'm guessing the injury to Lamar Miller wasn't too severe because he's back, no longer injured. Brandon Whedon's still injured for three weeks, but it doesn't really matter because he's like a third-string quarterback. We still would like to have him for depth purposes. But with that said, guys, that is going to do it for today's episode of the Houston Texans Madden 17 Connected Franchise Series. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, although we the gameplay was probably kind of crappy with the freezing webcam and just the uneventful game. Hopefully you still at least enjoyed the trade portion of the video. And with that said, don't forget to leave your trade suggestions in the comment section below because the ones with the most thumbs up will be featured in next episode. And also don't forget to enter the giveaway for the Mad 18 Goat Edition. All you gotta do is follow my Instagram in the description box below and leave your Instagram name in the comment section below. And I'll be picking a winner in the next couple of days and one of my lucky subscribers will be winning themselves an edition of Madden 18. So with that said guys, that's gonna do it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.